Boxing King Media in association with Boxrow. Fraser Clark, you're guessing initially a bit of disappointment and then you got another name straight away, you got a replacement opponent. Uh, but did you have a period where you didn't have an opponent and you was probably up in the air? Oh yeah, there's that 24 hours and this is only, uh, what day are we now? We're Wednesday, this is only Monday. There's 24 hours where it's up in the air, you prepared um, six weeks for this opponent. We've done, we done a few sit downs and watched him fight. Um, it's frustrating, you know, this seems to be a common thing with me now. I think this is like the third opponent or fourth opponent that I've had a pull out uh, the last week. But, you know, in this situation, it, it couldn't be helped. Um, Redell Booker, you know, is a genuine situation, medical emergency. Uh, I've actually spoke to him today on the phone. Uh, he reached out and said, you know what, he's sorry. Like, he was an ultimate professional. He actually apologised that he couldn't come over. He knows I'm prepared and stuff. Um, and I wished him all the best in recovery. Um, like I say, he had a seizure, so... You know, it was a serious situation and uh, wishing him all the best going forward. Well, that's a shame to hear. I was going to ask you what the medical emergency was, but I'm guessing he's in, he's, he's in good health now? He's in good health. Um, he's got to sit down with a few specialists and see people. You know, like he said and like I said to him on the phone, your health comes first before anything. Um, boxing, boxing doesn't matter when it comes to your health. And, you know, you've got a family, you're a family man. So I wish him all the best. Um, and I said to him, you know, I was good for him, I was good for myself. But it's, that's boxing, one of the things that happens. Good stuff. You've got a replacement of Bonham, Bogdan Dino, who's been over these shows before, fought Daniel Dubois. How much pressure do you, are you under to try and outperform what Daniel Dubois done? Because it's a bit weird, because when I look at all the heavyweight landscape in Britain, you seem to get so much criticism about who you're fighting. Um, it's almost like the Olympics have been a curse for you. Yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. I mean, the thing with the Olympics is there's not one fighter in this country that wouldn't want my... Um, wouldn't want my trophy cabinet. There's not one, like, as an amateur, there's not, because everyone was an amateur once, and there's not one of them, that, especially the heavyweights, that wouldn't want the same medals and achievements that I've got. I do get a lot of stick for it, I don't know why. I think it's because you go to the Olympics, obviously it gives you the platform. With that comes pressure, you know, it's understandable. Um, I'm 31 years old as well, which I get reminded of every day. Um, and people say, yeah, I haven't got time, which I think is the wrong thing, because I feel like I've got loads of time. I feel great, I'm in good health. Um, but yeah, I don't know why people want to give me stick. Um, I think one of the reasons might be because I'm quite vocal. I, I do all the interviews. I do a lot for Sky. I do a lot of punditry. People see my face. And, and uh, what, what do a lot of people call me? A, a Sky hype job. And I think that's a bit unfair because it's not my fault I can string a sentence together and I'm asked to work. And a lot of these other guys call a lot of these other heavyweights. You know, it's like speaking to a punch bag. So... Uh, that's not my fault, but in terms of fighting, I just do what I do, you know, take them one by one, and uh, I feel no pressure to make a statement. I feel pressure to win, but I feel that in every fight. It is disappointing to see, because I do look at what people say, and I just do wonder, because if people were at your shoes on, they'd understand the business side of it, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I spoke to Jamie TKV recently, and he seemed to have a few things to say about you, called you out. Uh, I don't want to misquote him, but I'm sure he called you a chicken or somebody who's selecting his opponents, but I think he did commentary on his last fight. So just tell me what he thought of him as an opponent and how realistic is it that you could face off with uh, Jamie TKV? No, I think it is realistic. I did do the commentary on Jamie's last fight and I'm fair in my commentary. You know, I said what I said. Um, I think it wasn't a bad performance. I think even in his standards, and I think he probably admitted he could, he could have done better. Uh, he's called me out, he's called me a chicken. He knows that's not true. I know that's not true. You know, um, I think me and Jamie will get on eventually, 100%. Um, if Jamie T gave me an example chicken and I'm afraid to fight it, then it must be crazy because I, I, I've, I've boxed 100 Jamie T KVs. You know what I mean? Um, he's, he's a good fighter, you know. I'm, I'm not taking nothing away from him. I've got no bad word to say about him. We spoke off camera and it's never none of this uh, hostility or nothing like that. Do you know what I mean? But I think... He's new in the pro in the pro game. I, I'm new in the pro game. I think I understand it a bit bit more than he does. You know what I mean? Um, he's screaming for this fight. When I think, you know, personally, I think it's, it's a bit of a bigger fight. A little bit later, um, I think he's got earned his stripes. I'm trying to earn my stripes. And when we get both get in a position where the fight makes sense um, financially, or he can put us put one of us in a in a great position to go and fight for the British title, even. I think that I think that's the better route for us both. But I know people, what people will say, oh, you know, you don't want to do, you don't want to fight, you don't want to fight. 
that's a load of crap. Me and Jamie, Jamie's a man like me. We'd fight each other tomorrow. We'd fight each other in this ring now. You know, that's just the people we are. But there is a business element, element to it, you know? We, we do want to propel ourselves. Like, I think the people he's fighting and the people I'm fighting, like you said, you look at my opponent now and it was going to be Riddell Booker. It's now it's Inu. I think that's a lot better than the last person he fought. Do you know what I mean? So when we, when we start like even in open, if someone says to us, "Look, you fight this, the winner gets to fight for the British title," we both jump out in a heartbeat. Do you know what I mean? But I got I got nothing against Jamie. He's, he's a young man trying to make it like myself. You know, um, when it, when the camera comes in front of me, like I have a little diss about me. I'm used to it now. Do you know what I mean? It's part of the game, man. And I want to speak to you, uh, Fraser, about uh, two five eight. We've seen a lot of, obviously, you're a 258 fighter, but you've seen a lot of fighters recently, like Boatsi, uh, he's left, uh, Lawrence has left, and I think Ramla Ali's not official, but I've seen on her Instagram today, she's got a different management company in place. So, what, what, why do you think people are left 258, to your knowledge? I think it's, it's a bit of a natural progression for a lot of people in boxing, you know? I think people like to try and understand boxing management, managing themselves, they're always learning. I'm, I'm like, I'm no other, you know, I'm listening all the time, I try to be involved in as many conversations as I can. Once again, um, you always think you know better as, as the fighter. Um, I'm not, I wasn't naive enough to jump into the pro game without management, you know, and they've really helped me. To me, 258 have been great, you know, um, especially Will Harvey, you know, I work with on a, on a daily. It would really help me, you know, find my way, find my feet. But I think them guys, you know, the, the, the level they're at and, and where they're at in terms of their careers, they're, they're, they're trying to propel themselves and they feel they're in a position where they know enough of the game to be able to put themselves in the right situations. Um, is it the right decision, is it the wrong decision? It's their decision at the end of the day. Uh, but 258, you know, they're, they're a great company. Uh, they do great for the boxers, good people. And like I say, I'm very appreciative of the work I've done with them in my first year as a pro. Uh, interesting thoughts. I wanted to get a different perspective. Uh, also, if you've seen the comments Lonzo Coley's done recently about uh, specifically Eddie Hearn calling him vindictive. Uh, obviously, I know you worked with Eddie before uh, in his security days. Um, what do you make of all that? Do you think there's uh, a lot more going on behind the scenes that we're aware of? Because it seems like there's um, it seems like there's a lot going on. Don't know what, but it seems like there's a lot. Of, I don't want to use the word hatred, but them, them guys are falling out big time. Yeah, I mean. This has probably happened through the years of boxing, but now we get to hear it on social media because we've got guys like yourself that are able to speak to the fighters and speak to the promoters and make it common knowledge to people. But there's probably been these kind of arguments going on for years, you know, boxer and uh, management and uh, promoter falling out. It's, it's nothing new, but you know, I, I have worked with Eddie, like you say, on the security side of things. I've never had a business relationship with him. Um, he's always been straight with me, to be fair. Um, you know, I think... Probably a li little bit sour now and then after, you know, I chose to come to Boxer. But then he made out that he didn't care about me as well. So, you know, Eddie, Eddie's a, a businessman, a very good businessman. Um, probably probably the best promoter in the world, it, it, you know, at the minute. So, um, big up Ben Shalom, by the way. But, you know, Eddie's been doing it for a long time. He's doing fantastic things. So, I don't know what their beef is. But, you know, I think it could, probably comes down to money. And uh, anyone can fall out over that. Anyone can fall out over it. But... You know, Eddie's doing a fantastic job with his fighters in his stable. Um, Lawrence is now a boxer. New beginnings, and if it wasn't broadcasted all over, no one would think nothing of it. But at the minute, the circus that is professional boxing, Instagram, Twitter, there seems to be more done on that than, than in the ring. So, you know, let's get out of the way and get back to fighting. You're probably right there. Last question on that. Uh, Lawrence specifically said that he felt that Eddie made an issue out of him and Boatsy leaving, but he didn't have a problem with uh, Chris Billum Smith and Liam Smith leaving. Uh, what, what do you make of that? Um, I don't know where he's going with them comments. You know, um, I think he probably, he probably. The truth is, he probably prioritised Boatsy and Lawrence a little bit more. Probably put a little bit more into them than he did them other guys. So. Don't get me wrong, Eddie, Eddie will let go who he chooses to let go. And if you don't want to let someone go, he's going to be upset and pissed about it, uh, just like any, any promoter would be. So I, I understand him being upset. And I think he did a fantastic job with Lawrence, by the way. You know, Lawrence is world champion after 16 fights. That's like, that's mega. That's, that's, that's big. So, you know, like I say, I think everyone gets to a stage in boxing where they think they know best and they can want to take control of their own career. Lawrence and Watts, you know, different and... You know, as a man, they're the one taking the punches and they're the one wanting to earn the most money. 
and look after themselves and they, if they think Sky Sports and Boxers is the place to put them into the best position then that, that, you know you have to sort of thank you for your work and, and well done on your way Definitely so Fraser I appreciate your time I'll try and catch you later in the week and uh, all the best Saturday night you've got a real challenge on your hands with Bog Dandino Appreciate it man thank you